The Boondocks is an adult animation show that has aged pretty well over the years. A lot of the jokes are pretty funny to this day, but as much as I love The Boondocks, The Boondocks doesn't reciprocate much love for other black TV shows. More specifically, BET. The Boondocks has taken a few shots at BET, such as this. Black entertainment television is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And they have even dedicated two episodes to bash on BET. I know what you may be thinking, that I'm looking too deep into this, especially since The Boondocks is a satirical comedy show, but just because it is a comedy show doesn't mean that there is no meaning to the comedy itself. We humans tend to use comedy to associate ourselves with whatever we are joking about, and the fact every time BET is insinuated or mentioned in the show, it is always portrayed in the same negative light. So I do believe that The Boondocks, and its creator Aaron Magruder, don't like most black TV shows or BET, to be more precise. In an interview with Hard Knocks Live TV, Aaron Magruder briefly talks about BET and doesn't fully express how he feels about BET due to legal reasons. Though he does say that BET is what it is. Do I believe Aaron Magruder believes that BET and its top executives are evil? No. However, I wouldn't say that I'm far too off the mark if Aaron Magruder felt that it would be better if BET and the shows they produce never existed. Just a disclaimer. I don't watch BET nor have I watched it in over a decade, and this video is not me saying BET is a plague on this planet that needs to be eradicated. I am simply delving into why the Boondocks doesn't seem to think highly of BET. So with that out the way, let's talk about why the Boondocks, a show primarily focused on black people, doesn't like BET. The episode of The Hunger Strike is the Boondocks episode people think of when they think of BET in The Boondocks. But before that episode was ever created, it made a brief cameo in the episode featuring Martin Luther King, where he declares it's the worst thing he has ever seen. There was also a predecessor storyline to The Hunger Strike in the episode Riley Was Here. The episode Riley Was Here has a little to do with BET and black television, as the primary plot focuses on Riley and his Bob Ross inspired teacher vandalizing houses by spray painting them. However, there is a second secondary plot centered on Huey, who for some reason decides he is going to subject himself to watch nothing but black television for two weeks. Now what compelled Huey to do this is he heard of a case of a woman who died 13 hours into a 24 hour marathon of a show called The Parkers. If you don't know, The Parkers is a spinoff of the black TV sitcom Moesha. Her cause of death was undetermined and the woman's family ended up settling with an undisclosed amount of money from the network UPN, which aired The Parkers. UPN is not BET, but it feels like the Boondocks used UPN as a reference for BET. So this incident is what inspired Huey to conduct this experiment to find out if watching too much black television can hurt you. He goes to the doctor to see if he would suffer any severe health effects afterwards. The next time we see Huey in this episode, he is less than 5 days in and he appears to be suffering severely from watching too much black television. His sunken in eyes are all we need to know that he is tired. And his memory is not the best as he forgets why he came into his room. At first you think it's probably because of lack of sleep, but Huey never stated he has to stay awake during this entire time. He just says that he has to only watch black television. On day 5, Huey says, quote, I'm a little nauseous man, unquote. I know it doesn't seem like much, but Huey ending his sentence with the word man is unlike him. His vocabulary usually avoids unnecessary words, but something within Huey is brewing. When we see him again, it's day 8, and Huey's mind has plunged deeper into the black television content he has been consuming. He says he feels okay, but he's just tired, though he is completely detached from everything around him. Huey usually calls out Riley's antics, yet he doesn't seem to care, let alone register that Riley is spray painting houses. As his experiment draws to an end, Grandad asks where Huey has been, and this is how Huey responds. Just, you know, chilling, you know, just doing my little TV watching thing. Yeah, it's very unlike Huey to talk this way because he doesn't use much slang. The show is implying that watching too much black television has numbed Huey's mind. When Riley prepares to leave the house at night so that he can spray paint another house, Huey simply tells Riley to move out the way because he is blocking the TV. Riley tells Huey not to tell Grandad that he left, and Huey responds by asking if Riley has any grape soda. Again, this is unlike Huey, but because he is watching too much black television, he's not himself. After Riley leaves, Huey changes the channel onto something that is not black television because his experiment is over, and he instantly snaps out of the trance he was in. The fact he's no longer tired and his sunken in eyes disappeared the moment he changed the channel tells me as a viewer that he wasn't feeling the way he felt because of a lack of sleep. 
The episode never states it, but the implication is that Huey felt the way he felt because of all of the black television he was consuming. Huey summed his experiment up to that he didn't feel sick or nothing, and while he didn't undergo any severe symptoms, his mannerisms and pattern of speech were similar to a stereotypical black character you would see in a TV show. This storyline never made any outright statements, but there is a heavy implication that watching too much black television is bad, and this notion is further reinforced in the Hunger Strike episode in Season 2. The president of BET in this episode is named Deborah Leevil. That's right, she has evil in her name, and that should be enough to tell you what type of person she is. She's pretty much a combination of Deborah L. Lee, who was the CEO of BET, and Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. In the boondocks, BET has one goal and one goal alone, the destruction of black people. Now they can't go around discriminating against black people or trying to make them second class citizens, but they can try to brainwash them by creating a non-stop cavalcade of black shows with the sole objective to make them dumber. Ever since the creation of BET, one of the employees points out that unemployment, drug use, dropouts, and incarceration have skyrocketed, but even so, that is not enough to quell the folks at BET. Although they seem to hide their motives in public, Huey views BET as a disease that needs to be ridden of. He goes onto the news demanding that BET gets taken off the air and the top executives commit seppuku. He decides he's not going to eat food until they have done so. Well, seems like Huey must have done some reflecting after he conducted that experiment. Maybe he realized that black TV is not what people should be watching. I mean, in universe of the show, He's spot on that black TV can harm the black community. Grandad and Riley think Huey is being ridiculous for going on a hunger strike to get BET taken off, and they don't believe that BET is trying to destroy black people. Riley says he watches BET every day, and there is nothing wrong with him, and he declares Huey won't ever have paper or bitches. Riley is the last person who should be saying BET hasn't affected him because his whole persona has been shaped by the media that he consumes. Riley hardly ever does any thinking for himself, and all of his opinions and beliefs stem from whatever is popular. Black culture, or to be more precise, the culture we live in today, has this notion that your social status is tied to the amount of money or women you have. The more you have, the more respected you are. After Riley says this, Huey uses what Riley just said as reassurance that he is correct that BET is trying to destroy black people. A good portion of the episode follows Huey teaming up with Rallo Goodlove to take down BET. Their toiling pays off as more black people rally behind the cause and decide to stop watching BET. Some even choose to read books instead. However, Rallo Goodlove doesn't really care about BET trying to destroy black people. He only cares about exposure and money. Huey felt that their cause was going so far, but Rallo's actions of going to a strip club is harming the reputation of their cause. The boycott ends because Rallo Goodlove teams up with BET, and Huey's left hurt because he still hasn't eaten, and his hopes for taking down BET and his hopes for BET getting taken off the air are over. There is a continuation episode for the BET storyline where they give Uncle Ruckus his own show. How is it that Uncle Ruckus, the most anti-black person a person can be, ended up getting his own show on BET, who at the very least in-universe of the show, try to portray themselves as pro-black. I guess a lot of people really like Uncle Ruckus in hearing him speak his thoughts, no matter how vulgar. BET was playing 4D chess here. Not only do they get to make more money off of Uncle Ruckus, but they also get to use him as a spokesperson for their ideology and to further the destruction of black people. The first half of this episode is just a day in the life of Uncle Ruckus, and the second half is him reluctantly embracing black culture after he finds out he is black. Honestly, there is not much that this episode adds onto the notion that BET is an evil corporation that hurts black people, but it does give one character in particular a little more screen time that they did not get in the previous episode. Me Wedgie Rudlin Wedgie is a sophisticated person who graduated from Harvard and is a yes man to his executive overlords. If they tell him to jump, he will ask how high. The Boondocks tends to insert satirized versions of real life people, and Wedgie is no exception to this rule. He is based off of the real life person, Reginald Hudlin, who is credited as an executive producer of the show. But why would the Boondocks take shots at someone who is credited as the executive producer? Well, it turns out that Aaron Magruder and Reginald Hudlin actually share some history. Reginald would help Aaron develop the Boondocks comic strips, as well as creating a comic novel titled Birth of a Nation, which is a political satire. He was also involved with the Boondocks pilot episode, which was sent to Fox, but afterwards, Aaron and Reginald had a fallout. This fallout would be addressed in a podcast, but Reginald doesn't delve into the details as to why they ended up going their separate ways. It is mostly left vague, which I assume is for legal reasons, but Reginald presents his side of the story as Aaron not seeing the bigger picture. To Reginald, 
Aaron didn't have what it takes to keep things going for a long period of time. Aaron has been taking shots at BET ever since he was creating the Boondocks comic, and the reason he does so is because he believes BET does not serve the interest of black Americans. In response to this, Robert Johnson, the founder of BET, claimed that the 500 plus employees of BET do more in one day to serve the interest of African Americans than Aaron has done in his entire life. Not only did BET fire shots back, but his old friend Reginald would also later go on to work for BET. Reginald declared that he would elevate the standards of BET. Aaron felt no elevation of standards were made, so in response, he created the BET episode and its sequel. To me, that explains a lot why the Boondocks portrayed BET the way they did. The Boondocks tried to keep it tame, and subtly implied in Season 1 that BET produces subpar content. From the information I gathered, it drew me to the conclusion that Aaron believes BET does not produce content he feels would serve the interest of African Americans. There also seems to be some personal feelings which led the Boondocks to portraying BET the way they did because of the fallouts Aaron had with the employees of BET. That's gonna do it for the video, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, how about you subscribe, comment, and like. Anyways, later.